Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here. This video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duel video, and this time playing against D-Mall again, and this time also we're playing with the Metal Foes Zoo Plant deck that I did in a video about two days back. Uh, this is using Bow Baboon, which is a very fantastic piece of support uh, for how the, like this deck, for what this deck needs. It essentially means that you're playing nine Terror Tops. Um, and so playing against Demol, who is also who's also got a YouTube channel called The Stuff of Nerds that he asked me to give him a little shout out for because I didn't know it existed. Um, I didn't know he actually did things on it rather, um, and that's actually very interesting. But so this hand is kind of odd in that it's got double Mulmer rats in it, but that's fine. It's 100% okay because what we're gonna do is we're just gonna cycle out with uh, with Bow Baboons, and he max seed me, but. That's okay. I'm just gonna go for it. I don't even care. <laughs> I actually just do not care at this point. Um, I'm just legitimately just gonna go for it. Not even a problem. Because now I've got Arch Phoenix Centric, which I can use to pop that back row. Um, I'm, I was gonna use it on like a combination, but no. Let's just use it to pop a back row and let's just try and kill him, shall we? Uh, that seems like the best result. Book of Moon on my Bow Baboon? Fuck me! Well, I guess you don't get to draw more cards then. Rip. <laughs> Rip in peace. Uh, well, actually, he will get to draw more cards because I can Pendulum Summon into a rat play. Hell yeah. All right. Well, so what we're going to do here is that we're going to Special Summon uh, my Bunbunku and this and this. Um, so these are all options. I can Pendulum the rat as well, and that way I can just start my turn structure with that. Um... I can eccentric away his uh, I can eccentric away his monster, and I could probably just kill him. Or I don't even have to eccentric away his monster. I could probably just make an Ori help. Um, but no, I can't. I can't make an Ori help. Uh, that's not how this is gonna go. Uh, but so we're just gonna take away resources. That's what we're gonna do. Uh, oh my goodness, he's playing Ritual Beasts, and I just fell straight into this one. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Okay. Well, alrighty then. So, okay. What we're gonna do now is that we're just going to. Oh God! What have I done? Um, I'm gonna activate this to set a counter. Um, because counter will allow me to at least keep myself alive. And then I'm going to go into. Uh, Wild Bow into Dryden't, just so that I can pop two cards, because I don't care if I'm giving him two cards, I can pop two cards. Uh, unless I get Ghost ogre here. Uh, but so what we'll do is we'll just destroy this, uh, and now I can just poke for 12. This turn turned into a hunk of shit, and that is actually just a problem. The Metal Foes Zoo deck does have a huge problem going second, uh, into back row and things of the like. Uh, but so we're just gonna intern here. He's back at six cards. Uh, he's got seven now. He's got to play through a Dryden't and a counter, which I don't know if he can actually do. Um, so he's terraforming here for probably Oracle of Zephra. And man, got me with the Winda. Arch Phoenix centric popping Winda, but I'm hoping that it still doesn't actually matter. I'm hoping that it still doesn't even matter because he is very clearly behind if he was only setting one monster and setting Book of Moon. If he was literally just T-setting, then that's all that he had access to. Now, he did draw um, one, two, three, four cards. No, he drew, yeah, he drew four, he drew four new cards, because he had three cards, um, he had the, he had three cards, and one of them was Maxi, so he drew four new cards. Uh, and then he has access to the terraforming, um, so that's a fifth new card. So, he does have a basically fresh hand. So, that's what we've got to work with. But so, let's see, he's going to be able to Brain Research Lab and get two normal summons for Psychic Monsters. Um, or just get an additional normal summon in general. Uh, is he going to use the Rampangu effect right away to play around my Dryden? He is not. Interesting. Um, and so, Laura's effect... Ah, this plays around Dryden! Um, well, let's see, I'm going to go ahead and activate this. And I'm going to pop the Rampangu. Uh, because the Rampangu is going to fuel his Banish Zone further than I want it to happen. Uh, but this has already been Special Summoned once, so he's going to be able to make like Conahawk, but then like nothing else. Uh, he's not going to be able to get a search and then tag out. 
he's not going to be able to do any of that. Like, his resource pool is incredibly limited in terms of what he has access to. And I've got a Metal Foes counter that he knows about, so my resource pool is fairly large in terms of what I can do. But so he's doing that, so I'm going to go ahead and activate this counter now. There's no guarantee he's not just going to destroy something. Uh, that he's, there's no guarantee he's going to attack anything else. So I'll just get a Volflame out of my deck, just because it's huge. Uh, winning the Beat Stick War. He's not attacking my Bow Baboon, which is smart. Uh, but I get to flip it next turn and then pop it anyway and start a uh, start a like rat play anyway. But the thing is, one of my rats is gone. So I would have to search for Dragoons and Normal Summon it. And that will establish the same play that I can normally do with my Fusion Substitute and all that stuff. So that's, that's the thing. Now the thing here is that he can search Steeds. But Steeds isn't really going to do much if I just attack over his Conahawk. And Conahawk would just be stuck out there, like not doing anything. And that would be a big problem for him. I can just always just establish a scale on Pendulum Summon first uh, for these cards as well. Uh, so, like, the game state seems to still be very much in my favor. He's putting these back. And he kind of has to search Ambush unless he already has it. So he, he's searching Steeds. So that makes me think that he already has Ambush. Uh, and so setting two and passing. Okay, so this looks like either Double Steeds or Steeds Ambush. Uh, which I'm honestly fine with both of those at this point in Juncture. But so I'm going to activate this in my scale. I'm going to pop it with, uh, with the Steelin so that it just goes away. Uh, D Barrier for Pendulum. Interesting. So now I know that this is just Steeds. Alright. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that completely. Uh, that D barrier is actually not really that optimal here. Uh, so this will go for another... I'll go for... Uh, counter. Yeah. Counter here seems fine. And so what I can do is I can flip some in this Balbaboon. And then I can just attack this. I can attack the Conahawk. I can't special summon Pendulums, right? Uh, for the rest of the turn, special summon monsters, yes. So I can search my Dragoons of Draconia and uh, and be fine. So yeah, you're going to do this and you're going to pop my Pendulum scale, so that's, that's fine. That's what I want. And now I can just use Counter to add back my Gold Driver to pop my Balbaboon and cycle this combination out of my hand and then put it back on the board. Uh, so there's there's that as an option. Unless he has like another Maxi, in which case, rip, <laughs> rip in peace. Uh, that's that's going to be the end of me. Um, because I'm just going to gonna be giving him more cards. But, so, okay. No additional Maxi. And so from here, I'm not going to be able to do the double Emerald play. Uh, I don't believe. I don't believe I'm going to be able to do the double emerald play. I could just be wrong. Um, let's see. These have already been used, so Arch Phoenix Centric is just better to keep in my hand uh, for this uh, sort of scenario. Well, actually, I could have probably just kept Gold Driver, because then Gold Driver would have been my normal summon. Uh, but, eh, it's fine. As it stands right now, I'm just, I want to do a zoo play to put myself ahead of the game, because I need to resolve Emerald and then put Dryden on board. <laughs> Uh, so, like, that's that's the biggest issue, is that I've got to do that. Uh, but, yeah, so I've got access... I've got access into so few cards, actually. So few monsters. Um, hmm. This is sad. This is not what I was expecting to walk into, but it's okay. Because I do still have my normal summon left over. So I'll special summon rat, and get my search... And my search will be for... My search will be for... I can get Fusion Substitute now. Um, or I could just get my monster and normal summon it. But Fusion Substitute actually does make a rank 4. So it would be these two into a rank 4. Because this doesn't really matter on the board anyway. Uh, so it would be Norden. And then it would be another rank 4. So yeah, we'll just, we'll just do that. It'll generate more draws that way. Uh, and it'll be overall better uh, for my turn structure. So... Uh, yeah, so I'm fine with this. So, Fusion Substitute here onto Norden with these two cards. Norden will activate, bringing back 
the one of the rats. It doesn't matter which. Uh, I'm just gonna keep one under the under the uh, broad bull, or I could make emerald, and then I could put broad uh, dryant on top of it and summon. Yeah. Oh, I could put back wild bow too. That's that's how this works. I'm I'm tripping tripping actual balls here. Uh, but so we'll detach Norden. We'll put back a rat. We'll put back the Drydent, and we'll put back the Borbo because those are the ones that haven't been used this turn for their overlays. Uh, so that's a draw, and then I can go into my Wild Bow, and then into my Drydent, and that'll give me two materials on it, and uh, that's that's good. That's that's good for me. So Drydent can pop the Conahawk, meaning that I won't have to deal with the Conahawk for the remainder of this game, which is very good. I've got Maxi as well, and then I can also just generate another draw off this Fusion Substitute. So that seems pretty good. Uh, and I've also got the Counter. So I've got another Metal Foe, I've got this, I've got this. Solid. Alright, so I think I'm okay with my position here. I've, I've clawed my way back into this game after that literal monumental failure of a turn one that, uh, that I had. Uh, that was a fucking... <laughs> it was a fucking absolute shit fest of a fucking turn one. Um, I'm gonna activate this now. I'm just gonna pop this. I'm not even gonna mess with it. Not even trying to mess with it. Uh, he can get his normal summon for like a Pilica or a Laura, but at that point he's sucked up the special summon on it, and uh, and that's all that I really care about. Uh, can he suicide this? Um, oh yeah, he can suicide this card into my emerald. That's going to be a bit irritating. Uh, he can suicide this into my emerald, summon big man. Oh, he's just going to attack my dryad. Okay. I was expecting I was expecting something else. I was expecting him to suicide that into the emerald and uh, and then get out like Gaia Pelio or some shit uh, that I didn't really want to deal with at all uh, to be very honest with you and then attack over my emerald. <laughs> um but uh, the Dryden is completely fair. Uh, that's fine. I'm okay with him doing that. So I'm just leaps and bounds ahead of this game at this point. Uh, because of just how this is being structured. Now what pendulum scales are in my extra deck? I've got those. Uh, I've got a Kieran as well. So the Kieran isn't even like... the This whole this whole thing with, uh, with this isn't even a problem. Uh, but So we'll activate this and we'll shuffle back more stuff. We'll shuffle these back. Um... What do I even want to shuffle back left? Uh, I guess uh, a rat. Because that'll put two rats back in my deck. But it's not, like, even remotely ideal. But I can activate this, pop the emerald. That way I can make a second emerald. Uh, I can activate this to pop my gold driver and set my combination. And then I can use the Arch Phoenix Centric to pop the combination and get a search and then just be another combo piece. Uh, we're we're cooking with gas, boys. That's that's what's happening here. We're cooking with gas. Uh, combinations effect, yes. So combination will search for a, another gold driver. And so I can put gold driver down, uh, activate this, and this counter can activate. I can special summon, I could do some fusions. I could fuse here with these. Uh, I can normal summon this and fuse uh, so that it use my additional special summon. From what? Um, oh my god, this affects both players? Hell yeah! This affects both players! I get two normal summons? I did not even know that. <laughs> That's amazing! I did not even realize. Well then. That just makes it even better. That just makes it even better for me. Um, I can activate this. I can spin these two cards to my deck to spin his window, and then I can just pendle him for game after I generate a draw. Um, so yeah, we'll generate this draw here. And that's a painful decision. That's good. We'll go and activate that. Deck thinning is important. Deck thinning is nice. Uh, so we'll get this out. Gold Driver can pop that scale, set my Metal Foes Fusion, um, and then I'll be able to just uh, do my stuff. I still have a Normal Summon left. That's so ridiculous. I did not know that this affected both players, but I mean, it makes sense. It's the old Field Spell rule, like, you know? It makes perfect sense that it would. 
Uh, but so we'll activate this Bisma gear. This Bisma gear can pop. I'm just gonna get all my spells and traps out of the deck so I make the most impactful pendulum summon possible. Um, because this is the last scale that I can put down, and then I can just pop the Bisma gear, get the other uh, get the other spell out of my deck after I pendulum. So we will do that. So pendulum summon. Pendulum summon the Kieran. Pendulum summon the Volflame. Pendulum summon the other big things, so Volflame and Gold Driver. Uh, just pendulum the biggest of every monster in my extra deck. Uh, that's 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 the that's the name of this game at this point. I still have a normal summon left, so I can normal summon this Lone Fire. Uh, something I actually really want to do is put like um, <laughs> let's put like tuners in the deck, like Spore and Glow Up Bulb, because you can pendulum summon Lone Fire Blossom and then just trip. Like if you have like a hand of Lone Fire Blossom plus Bow Baboon, for example. Um, or like double lone fire or whatever, you can pendulum summon the lone fires and then tribute them and summon tuners from your deck. Uh, that would be like the coolest thing in the world, but it would also mean that your extra deck is even tighter than it is now, uh, which I think this extra deck is only 14 cards because I took a card out, couldn't remember what it was, and then just never replaced it. Um, so like there is that, but ultimately, um, like this deck is still just really cool. And so like I think like the 15th slot in my extra deck was Ignister. And I took out Luster, so I took out Ignister. But if the tuners went back in, like Spore and Glow Bulb, Ignister would just go straight back in because Glow Bulb or Spore plus Volflame is Ignister. Um, and then, like, there's probably another card that could be cut in this extra. Um, the Zoo cards are pretty mandatory. Like the the Mechwhipped Engineer is kind of kind of fringe, um, so you could probably cut it for another uh, another Synchro in the form of something good like a Stardust or or I don't know um, something else that would just be really good maybe like Black Rose uh, which you could synchro with like Mithrilium for and then uh, do stuff there so there's there's the possibility uh, of the potential being there so bring research lab for Winda uh, I'm gonna go ahead and activate nothing um, if he goes into Kona Hawk that's fine because he's gonna use his thing to put those two back. Yeah, I'm not worried about playing this Max C right now. Uh, he's gonna search for. He's gonna search for Steeds, I assume. Steeds ambush is what you want. This deck is just unfortunately really weak now. Like this, it was, this was one of the decks that I thought would like be really good post Raging Tempest, and it was, uh, but only for like a week, because then the format just defined itself. To the point where like dimensional barrier is 100% everywhere. So are solemn strikes. Like it was, it was good to play for like the first week that the new support came out in the form of window. But now, unfortunately, the deck is just back to its kind of mediocre standpoint of like where it's just not really doing anything. Um, so that's a bit irritable. But so I get an additional normal summon off this. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start stacking up additional normals on this and I'm gonna try and game him with his brain research lab because it does that neat little burn damage that's what we're gonna try that's what we're gonna try and do a little lot uh, but we're gonna normal summon this and we're gonna see if it gets caught by a steeds because this is super incentivized yeah okay all right so steeds on this uh-huh all right so now a we'll painful decision here I'm gonna painful decision for gold drivers uh, and I'm gonna be able to set my scale and pendulum summon the lone fire and the rat. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we'll activate this and then we'll activate the other one. And so we'll be able to pendulum summon lone fire and rat. So now if he has one steeds left over, um, he has to have steeds plus ambush in order to uh, in order to have like a really good set of, uh, of cards to use. Because he, he just needs to. He needs to have Steeds plus Ambush. And if he does, then he can clear my board. Good on him. Uh, but otherwise, I'm just going to stack up into my rat plays. Uh, so yeah, here's one Steeds. Uh, and so what's this card? Is Yeah, he's got the Ambush. All right. Okay, so Ambush for those. I'm going to maxi here. I'm probably going to lose this game. Uh, just because this is, this is still really hard to deal with. And now I just drew a counter. So counter is gonna make it to where I can't deal with. Uh, I, I won't have anything on board that'll die. So I'm very likely just gonna die the next turn because of he's gonna be able to pump multiple times. And yeah, uh, it's just not it's not looking good for me uh, in any way, shape, or form. 
and saving the max C wouldn't have really done anything because he would have just been able to start his next turn with a fusion play anyway. So it doesn't really address the problem of the situation. But so we'll set counter, and I'll set this counter, and I'll pass my turn. Uh, so yeah, this game is very much mine to lose at this point because he could just fuse up into his stuff and just kill me. Or he could just turn these to attack mode and then just normal summon a guy. <laughs> Um, it's there's so many clean cut game shots, especially since he knows one of these is counter. Uh, that he could just tag these. Uh, he could fuse up with these two. He could use this uh, Peleo to banish a card first, um, and then he could just uh, tag these up into a fusion, into like an uh, into like a an Ultia Peleo for happenstance. He could then use Conahawk's effect to get a search, targeting those two plus the card that he banished. Tag it out for these two cards. And, uh, and get his search for just a monster he could normal summon uh, in the form of like a second Apelio and then he could normal summon the Apelio, fuse again into a big uh, fusion play and then just have game. Uh, so like he's he's got options for game here if he chooses to take them. If he has like any normal summonable monster or hmm interesting. I think it's interesting that he's not choosing like the Lightning Chidori route for the only back row that he knows that are the only back row that he doesn't know. Uh, so like he could have he could have pumped, made lightning Chidori, and done other things as well. Uh, so he definitely had a game shot here, but he's just choosing not to take it. But I doubt that I'll be able to capitalize on that. <laughs> One hundred percent doubt. Um, he can tag the two weak monsters into like Ulti Petalfin to be a defensive line, and. Or you can just go and ulti that pillar. Really, he's just choosing not to make any plays. But it's un it's it's okay because I cannot win this game. Cannot win at all because I just drew Metal Foes Fusion, and that is a problem this deck still has: is that you still draw those unsavory spells and traps that you that you don't want to draw. But so now I get to go first, and I've opened Terra Top plus Bow Baboon. Plus my black sheep, so I get to search for a low scale instead of uh, instead of the black sheep for the fusion substitute. So what we'll do is we'll do this. I've got the combination, which is gonna, gonna it's just gonna get rotated out by the Baba Boon. Uh, no biggie. I'm gonna special summon this. I'm just gonna go straight into Mechwhipped Engineer, uh, just because that's uh, a better card for me to have right now, and it just serves as protection. And so now I can normal summon this. I'm gonna activate this to go ahead and get my fusion substitute. Uh, that just seems like the ideal. Because I don't want to draw it and then just have to immediately put it back off Baba Boon. That would be that would be silly. But so normal the Baba Boon, use its effect to draw a card, and then rotate the combination back to the bottom of my deck. And so I've got Max C here. I could actually I can make the Augusto Emerald before I um, use my Bullhorn search, my Broad Bull search. Um, and what I could do is I could put the Fusion Substitute back in my deck and search it again. Um, can I use... I can use this effect multiple times a turn, right? Uh, if this card is sent to the grave... Yeah, its effect is multiple times a turn. So, I'm probably going to do that. <laughs> uh, just to be completely ridiculous. Is I'm probably going to use the Baba Boons. Depending on what I draw, of course. I could just draw two of the Metal Foe Spells and Traps, and then they just go immediately back on the bottom of my deck. Um, those That could be the 100% fact of the, of the day. Uh, because these these don't cycle anything out of your hands. You see, this is going on bottom. Not not playing with this. And that's a Bambuku, which I kind of want to keep. So, yeah, the Fusion Substitute is going back on the bottom of the deck. So, from here, we'll make MX Saber Invoker and go into the Rat play. And so, I'm just going to be very reliant on drawing Metal Foes cards uh, from here. Because I'm going to need a low scale. Uh, at some point, but actually not even, because I don't even have a lot of scales in my hand in general, but I'm going to be drawing four cards. Uh, so it's it's perfectly fine. So yeah, Wild Bow into Tiger Mortar, into Summoning Rat, and then we'll make Emerald first, and then we'll search off the uh, off of the Broad Bull. So we'll do that. That seems like the proper play structure, at least from my layman's perspective. So yeah, Bullhorn here. Come on, give it to me. There we go. For some reason, my program is starting to lag, uh, but it's still at a pretty high FPS, so I don't understand why it's lagging. 
uh, it's just choosing to do so. But so yeah, we'll detach this, we will summon the last rat from the deck, we'll make Emerald first, because I have plenty of targets. And so Emerald here, and then put back the black sheep. The Ba Ba Black Sheep. So yeah, we'll do this. We'll put back a rat, a black sheep, and the tiger mortar. So that's good. Das good. Actually, I think I messed up because I think I'm supposed to be able to shovel back two. So I might not be able to do two of the uh, two of the emeralds. Well, no, I'll definitely be able to do two of the emeralds. I just have to. I'll just have to do it in a uh, separate way uh, because I'll be. I'll have to fuse with like the invoker and the emerald, which is fine. Uh, it's it's 100% fine. It's still the same amount of cards. It's just you're not summoning Bullhorn twice, uh, so that's fine per se. And it also clears the board of the Invoker that's just taking up space. So yeah, we'll do this uh, for this, and then this effect will bring back Rat, which will allow me to make Emerald again, and then yeah. And so based off what I have access to. I'll just keep doing these plays. But so, that's... It's not the ideal situation, but it's still pretty damn good. It only changes by, like, one card. But it even doesn't change by a card, per se. It just changes by, like, the method in which you get two said cards. Uh, but so we're going to shuffle all these back and try to draw more cards. Like, maybe Archfiend Eccentric would be good. Dimensional Barrier is also good. Um, let's, let's be realistic here. It's also very good. But so we can shovel back Norden, draw another Bamuku. Interesting. And so I can then use Gold Driver and pop this. But then I wouldn't have a scale high enough to summon with it. So yeah, this hand is kind of awkward. Awkward! But it's still fine because I still have a Dryden's. Uh, the Dryden does have two materials under it, which is a bit unfortunate. But at the same time, I'm okay with this because now I get to special summon two Bunbukus from my hand. I get to search for Kirin, uh, which means that I can pop my Volflame. I've got a counter set, so I don't really care about popping the Volflame, because I'll be basically guaranteed getting another card next turn anyway to uh, put, my, put in my scale, if not the same Volflame. Uh, and then I'll be able to just use this to set another counter. So that's good. So counter, counter, dimensional barrier, plus max C. Uh, yeah. I'm pretty okay with this, especially since I've got Mechwhipped Engineer backing all of this up. Like, goddamn. Uh, girl, goddamn. Mechwhipped Engineer is, like, the card. I love this card so much more than Totem Bird right now, just because it seems so much more applicable when you're going second. That's just the uh, that's just the way it seems to go. But so this is a set card that's probably, like, uh, it's probably Winda. Let's be real. And then he's setting a bunch of cards and passing. And that is ultimately where you get to the point of how this deck just can't really function in this format is that it can't answer going second boards. That's a huge problem that this deck has, this deck in particular. It cannot answer going second boards. And that's the... That's where the line gets drawn. But uh, I can shuffle back Bow Uh <laughs> I could definitely do that. So I will. I will do that. Yes! I will. Thank you. Uh, so we'll shuffle these back, draw a card, that is that. I can Tribute Summon for Kirin, bounce this, and then Pendulum Summon the Kirin. Uh, that seems like a pretty alright play. So, yeah. Because my board is really clogged, so might as well just go for free, right? That seems the way that it has to work. I drew the other Bambuku, too, that's kind of irritating. Uh, only slightly, though. But So I just get to stun him by continually putting his monsters back into his hand. And that just basically means that I have this game. Unless he has, like, Dimensional Barrier, Calling Pendulums. Uh, in which case, the monster stays here, and I probably will not be attacking it. Uh, because it'll probably be a window. In which case, I'm not fucking with that. Um, ah, okay. Well, alright then. So he's done this. I'll activate... I can activate this to pop a card, so... I'll activate my Bambuku in my opposite scale, just so I pop free cards, like... We, we were never not doing this for free. And yes. Gold Driver, Pop Buku. I think I still have, what, Combination and Full Metal Fist Fusion in my deck? Um, Alright. Well, I guess we'll just do this. This seems like it's an ideal interaction. Dimensional Barrier Calling Xyz? Is that where we're going? Because I'm down to go there. I'm 100% I'm down. Alright, well, I guess not. 
So when Buku goes, I'll set this. Um, and I'll put my... I can use my counter. <laughs> I'll use my counter to special summon a Volflame from my deck. Uh, just to be another big body. Big beefy. Big boofy, boofy, beefy, beefy, man. Um, and I can activate my Bismagear. And I will use my Bismagear here to pop my Drident because it's doing legitimately nothing. Um, so we'll do that and we'll set Metal Foes Fusion. And now my other counter gets to activate, which will summon another uh, Volflame from my deck. And then I can fuse with those into, uh, into Mithrilium to bounce one of these back row. Uh, so that it just takes less of the imminent threat of it being something. It takes that imminent threat of it being something away from me. Uh, so I'm just going to shuffle back both these counters because I can just reset them at a later date. So I'll just bounce this back row. If it's something that deals with the Mithrilium, then it's just going to let Mithrilium float into one of my guys from the extra deck. So if it's something like Strike, which, okay, so this tells me that this is something big that you do not want to do, have uh, have gone. Um, and this is, you can only, what, use? Yeah, you can only use this effect of Mithrilium once per turn. Uh, that seems pretty fair. Now, what I could have done is I could have put Mithrilium in attack mode, and I could have mechwhipped engineered it into defense mode, and then he couldn't have striked it. He could have striked to, like, negate its effect, but that would have been it. Um, and, like, that would have been really cool. But otherwise, nothing I'm too worried about here. So that's another dimensional barrier, which I could just use to call fusion at literally any point. Um, so not worried about that. So I'll just pendulum summon this Volflame from the extra deck. And so what I've got is I've got barrier, I've got all these... Uh, so what I will do is I will attack here, and if this is a Mirror Force card, I'll just use Mechquipped Engineer to turn Kieran into Defense Mode. And from there, it will be easy, but it turns out this is not a Mirror Force card, which I thought would definitely be what you're protecting with Strike. I don't understand how that would be what you're doing, uh, but I played around the Pendulum Summon um, being striked by doing the Mithrilium and the Kieran thing the way that I did them, but I find that so weird. I find that so weird that you just that this isn't a Mirror Force card. I was expecting that to be the case. I was expecting this to be like Stormy Mirror Force, and I was going to be like, all right, Mechquipped, put Kieran in defense mode so that it doesn't get bounced. Everything else gets bounced, and then I have to set my barrier um, and set uh, set my barrier and like just use Kieran as my defensive line next turn. I was fully expecting that. I'm very, I'm very kind of disappointed that that's not what the case was. But oh well. Whatever, that's a video, so I guess I'll take it. But anyway, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Any questions, comments, or concerns, and all that nonsense. Definitely be sure to like and subscribe for more content, and check out the links in the description to my Facebook and Patreon pages. If you want to help support me directly, then Patreon is the way to go, as well as it gets you into a monthly raffle giveaway for a high dollar card or sealed product, whatever the flavor of the month just happens to be. I'm still deciding on what this month's thing will be. It'll either be a box of fusion enforcers, or it'll be a couple of uh, rate special editions, or it'll probably be something like a Cypher and Lord Omega or something like that. Haven't decided yet, but it also gets you possible access to my personal Discord server if you do that reward tier to chat with me and play games with me for videos like Demol just did. All the games that I do videos for, I'm playing with people from my Discord server because it's easy to deal with, and they're just genuinely good people that I like chatting with. But other than that, if you're looking to buy or sell cards while also indirectly supporting my channel, then be sure to check out Second Chance Gaming's website, which is also linked in the description. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, and I'm a big fan of how they do business. They have really good shipping and pretty good prices. If you're looking to acquire cards I played in this video, then definitely check out their site and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But other than that, that's it for this video. Again, let me know what your thoughts are down below. Thanks for watching, thanks for your time, and as usual, guys, take care. I will see you in the next video.